months and months and months. That's why we're getting to this point in the lecture. So if you're unwilling to remain silent, please do so.
know yet whether it's the wrong judgment or whether it's something that God wants to do. Any questions? So the uh, I didn't get a chance to say that one of the things that God was telling me was that I was budgeting so that I would have been right in front of him on the day of judgment. Okay? All sights and screams and more. Okay? That's not the truth. The truth is that I was even thinking of that when I got there. Okay? So the rest of the week was just talking with God about it. And then this week, I didn't have a chance to talk with God about it. I walked on the ice with him, but did not talk about it. Got a lot of the talk over the past week, but I'm not sure that we got a lot of talk this past week over this week because it's this week. One of the most interesting and amazing chapters in the book is the first one that we read today. Let's go back and read through the whole chapter. We have a copy of that. And I think it's really important that we just kind of take a look at this and see where we're headed and what God wants to do. Um, okay? So in the reply to your bulletin, you have a couple of markers that are going to really focus partly on this. The first is that I want to say that I have three things that I feel are important to do. I want to share with you today what we think are the three things that are going to be most exciting for you. And there's three moments that we think when we do it, when we kind of really do it, are the most exciting. The first one is the moment that we say, that was God. That's why I want to share with you this. So now looking forward to it, what is it? Okay, so the, the first thing that we're going to do that's exciting for us is the book of Psalms, and I want to read this to you because I think it's really interesting. Uh, I'd like to read it in no particular order, just that I'll go first, then you go, okay? And it's the ninth chapter of Psalms, and I'm going to read it to you. And it says, there is no one like you, Lord, no one is like you, Lord, not one. You are divinely holy. And I'll pause right there and say, okay, this is not a prophecy. Uh, this is not a story. This is sort of a fact, not a prophecy. This is not a dream of God. This is Jesus. Thank you. 
summer when we were about to drop out of the University of Minnesota, um, we were more successful in that area than we had ever had in any other area of the country in terms of having a great campus. Um, but this research, research shows that 25% of young rural athletes involve back and neck pain. Um, and this is something that they see out on the field and that's not very common. If you consider that the average driver drives about 10 miles to get to their campus, that's about every 12,000 miles in total. One in 12,000 have already had an effective treatment for their condition and they need to have a new one. Um, so again, the fact that it's back and neck, it's uh, um, such a big issue in the rural community is very interesting to me. And that's that's not something that we see in any other part of the country. The second exhibit is uh, a letter that the Jazz and Tech Association sent um, right to where I'm standing right now. Shows how strong they are. They also have an interest in athletics, and um, they show they, they talk about the power of athletics and how it can affect our how it can affect our health and our well-being. And I applaud them for that because it's very important to me, especially in my area of research, to make sure that we're not just talking about athletics, but we're talking about health and wellness factors as well. Um, and then a, a third thing that I wanted to bring up about this um, second exhibit is that the, the GBA actually approved a, a grant for my Aquatic Swim Tutor um, that allowed them to have a certain data and tell you what your swim tape looks like. So if I have less than zero lap, that's a problem. If I have more than that, that's a problem. If I have more than that, that's a problem. So clearly we can study this in more depth and find out what your swim tape looks like and what your data sets look like. potentially another remedy that would fix this kind of a neck pain and back as opposed to um, as opposed to just ice pulling from our thighs. However, this is a skin cancer and um, flowers have reduced the time for that. So the odds are important to show up in this publication as well as this part of the grant that that is uh, potential for this. Um, so again, I think that that is uh, Campus, I think, is a, is a great one because it's one of the rarest areas that gets a place to get some to get some healing. Um, part three is uh, injection. That was an increase in breath and not a change in swim tape. So I think due to the carb not having fat loss as well, I'm not sure that it's going to replace what I think of as my my back loss by fixing my neck pain.
apply and see hey, what was he confessed about? That's why I just stopped there. I just stopped right right there, Brad. It's almost run over from all the racing and everything else. It was so much fun. Maybe too much because Mark feels like it's like too much of a big deal. Even though it's not.
The, the brick fence is only going to be for a limited area, and as the rendering shows, there can be certainly some landscaping to soften the, the brick uh, fence that is, that is there. Uh, with respect to the uh, no other remedy um, condition, again, Jay Jordan is only seeking uh, a four-foot additional height on the, um, the, the brick fence. And this is really the only effective way uh, to provide the adequate view or an appropriate view for a residence in such a community so that they're not looking at a bunch of cars parked in a commercial parking lot. Uh, we would submit that landscaping really isn't the answer because you can, you're going to have different plants, whether they're going to survive, how they long they're going to survive. The they can't cross the street. So uh, really the fence, the, the brick fence, is, the, is a permanent solution. It's an attractive solution, and it provides the remedy, which is avoiding the uh, uh, inappropriate view. Uh, as to the uh, standards for Section 12-12, 3J, the fence ordinance. Again, uh, I've talked about the unique condition and the location. The hardship is the, the owner's views of, again, looking at a commercial parking lot. Uh, and, and we don't believe that this is going to provide any unfavorable precedent. Uh, the brick fence has been lowered to six feet. Uh, it is it again only for a limited length this 25 to 30 feet on either side of the of the gate and it transitions then to an open six-foot fence uh, uh, and it um, uh, we believe that based on that this requested variance does meet the uh, standards under uh, both sections four and five of the application is the brick painted white or is it sort of a blonde brick or is it brickle, it, I guess I would correct the word painted. So we okay. use a mineral um, paint. Paint will flake off of brick, but we use a product called Romabio, okay. which is a mineral-based application so that it stays. So it'll, be, it'll look good for many, many. Will, will the application ever need to be reapplied? So there are a lot of houses years? in town that have it, okay. um, and it actually fades off a little bit, which is an attractive look. So it's okay. meant to look like it was there, not like freshly new. Okay. It's not just regular paint. So this brick wall, just to focus on the brick wall for now, not the gate. 
Right. So this brick wall, you're asking for four additional feet because it's a closed fence, correct? That's correct. And if I got, if, if I understood correctly, um, you'd mentioned that landscaping was sort of a, a, a less desirable alternative because it's maybe, you know, it's just one second. It's um, maybe not as permanent as a, as a brick wall. Um, can you address the, you know, the fact that, you know, a brick wall that's four feet higher than what's allowed in any other part of town is more desirable than landscaping? Just because the, the, the gates, the, the cul-de-sacs, the things that I've seen have shown um, landscaping which over time just seems to make it much, you know, fit into the community much, much better. And so we believe that the solid wall, the gate will slide behind the solid wall and it needs a place to live. So, you know, when the gate is open, it has to live somewhere so it lives behind that wall. Um, okay, that's one part of the fence that I'm not even sure if that's the only solution, but what about all the other parts of the brick wall that's four feet higher um, that I'm just thinking, oh, you know, landscaping, that's a great option for screening. Because I recall your, your primary focus that you mentioned today is the unattractive view. That's correct. I mean, one could argue, I'm not, it's not my property but a brick wall is not nearly as attractive as landscaping. From the outside, that would be my opinion. From the inside, maybe even. And I guess in, in my perspective, we always use a layered approach. So we, you know, even if we have a fence, we layer in front of it with other plantings that it provides a nice backdrop and tidies up the whole look of things. Um, and you know, landscaping is great and maybe it will grow to be a solid hedge at some point, but then one dies and it, you can never catch it up and I feel like it's never as consistent of a look. Well, I just, I don't wanna dwell on this, but I mean, I've looked at anything like the, the Woodgate property, the Gateway property that's just in Oak Brook, all of those and, and really any other um, entrance that's been around for more than, I don't know, 10 years landscaping is i don't see plants dying i don't see hedges dying it just is well maintained i mean that's a choice i think for the owners so I, um i'm just struggling with if, if the purpose is for screening landscaping eventually overtakes a wall right if it's done properly you won't even, you won't even see the wall on some of these other properties i don't you often don't even see any of the fencing that's behind the landscaping, which is kind of nice, I mean, in my opinion. So I'm just struggling with the, you know, addressing the unattractive view by building a wall, you know, a, a wall that is very permanent, it's, it's very visible, um, four feet higher than any other wall or um, that's in the village. And we planned a landscape in front of it. We, you know, we were asked to put three-foot arborvitaes in front, which is what I'm showing in the rendering. We think this is a very tidy look for Monroe, and we're next to a school and across from a commercial property, which we think this is the tidiest look, both inside and out. And, and, and I will speak from experience because I'm dealing with some dead bushes in my backyard. There are, there will be some difficulties even with just planting a hedge because you never know if the hedge is going to survive. And here you have a. I'm struggling with that argument. I'm, I'm I hate to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I mean it's landscaping. Everyone has landscaping in their property. If one happens to die, you replace it. It's just. But if anyhow, if you're truly growing a hedge, if one dies, that one will look out of sorts. Okay. For a long time, it will. So, the two Just homes that face Monroe, they're two stories or, or more, right? Yes. And you've got windows up there on the, on the second story. 
So that view is still going to be an open view into the parking lot, even with the six foot wall, right? That's correct. Okay. Because I agree here that the landscaping that would be border evergreens, there are places around town where you can see those border evergreens. They grow well over six feet. In fact, they're probably twice that high, that they might actually eventually obscure the view of the parking lot for those two homes, even from the second floor. Yeah, I doubt from the second floor because that's one of our issues is that the topography is such that in the eight lots, they're far higher than the street level. So I have to get, you know. But you, you're gonna be able to get, with the evergreens, you would be able to get a growth that would be substantially more than the six feet we're struggling with for the wall. In fact, probably twice that. I, I, I know places around the village where the, the trees are easily 10 or 12 feet tall. Um, and I think and that's the problem I'm having with the, with the uh, requirement that we find that there's no other effective remedy for what we're trying to address here. I, I think Just to be clear, this is six foot fence all total. It's a six foot fence and a six foot wall. They're both yeah. six feet. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you say four feet taller than any fence in town. I mean, there's lots and lots of six feet fences in town. This is just a corner side yard. Yeah, you know, I've, got, I've got a six foot, I've got hundreds of feet of six foot fence. Right. I mean, it's, it's not just, in the front of your property. Right, That's right. That's but the this, difference. That's right. why there's, the code says two feet of a closed fence in right. the front of a property. Right. That's the difference. Right, but to make this like a compound, to make this walled, there's not much choice. I mean, you can't, a two foot fence isn't gonna cut it. You're not gonna be, I mean, you can put all the trees you want. It's not gonna be like a compound. People can walk right off of Ogden, step right through the trees. It's, I mean, it, it we're, we're talking about something very different here. I mean, we gotta, I mean, maybe we don't wanna do it, but but it, it's, it's very different than the other examples that we're talking about. Right, I, I mean, and, I don't, I just, I didn't know the goal was to make this into a compound. I, I think that's one option, but that's, that's, in my opinion, I think that's the opposite of what well, there's no, I think I mean, is the to, character of the area. To put a gate, I mean, you, you, you can't put a, I mean, a two foot gate's not gonna work, right? I mean, you're gonna have it. Well, and I believe right? that I mean, the gate can be, the gate is not the issue. The height of the gate can be the same. It's just the, the walls, how right? High, how high can the gate be? Six. I, I believe it's eight, actually. Eight. eight. The gate itself actually, can be eight. Actually, it's just up to enough eight. for it to go behind. But, but it's got a, the gate. So even if the gate is open, I'm going to have eight feet on either side, and the gate would remain open during most of the day. But what's next to it is going to be a two foot fence. Is that right? Without, so the, have, so, without the variance, that's correct. Right. Without the variance, they'd have an eight foot tall fence or eight foot tall gate that slides And the columns behind. to support it. Slide, yeah, and slide then you'd have to drop down to a two, two foot feet tall fence. solid, correct. And, and this is just a, a practical observation, but if, if even if you're putting landscaping, if you're going to have a gate that's permitted to open, you'd have to put the landscaping well in front of that because if it's going to get tall enough, it's going to get wide too. And you, I think you'd end up having to put the landscaping well in, in front of the driveway gate. And, you know, as I've told you guys in the past, my contract to purchase this property is contingent on of this variance. And I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but I think the plan that I'm putting forth for the neighborhood is good for the village. Um, and I think this is a critical part mm -hmm. of that plan. We'll give you 90 seconds to sell us. Um, your homes, well, I mean, I, I know you didn't, weren't prepared to dis necessarily to discuss this, but what I, I'm thinking of, if we say no to this and one of your competitors takes over, how, how will your houses, your product be better than, we, I can think of two of your competitors, I don't want to give them any publicity here tonight, but you probably are thinking of the same ones. How will your product be better? How will your houses be better? So How will I, it enrich the neighborhood more? So I don't think any of my competitors, to use your word, are interested in this property. So this is well outside of what a residential 
Hinsdale Builder does. They don't mm -hmm. build subdivisions. So right. I'm taking myself way outside of what's expected, but I know that um, I will beautify the neighborhood tremendously from right now it looks horrendous mm -hmm. and my development will beautify it i am still sworn to secrecy but if you want me to quickly show you what the um homes are going to look like patrick's not here so he can't tell me i can't is that his ipod or ipad um, and So, uh, I don't know nice. if you guys can see or, so these are the look of the homes and if you look embedded in the driveways are the Roman numerals. Um, but the homes are extraordinarily beautiful and I feel that I'm really going out on a major <laughs> limb mm -hmm. to try to do this development and as I've told you in the past that I'm 59 years old and so many people my age are moving out of town, which is very unfortunate because we don't have the kind of property that they're looking for. Um, and so I know that I can build these houses and make them beautiful and add to the community. I mean, I, I've never wanted to do anything except beautify the community and think you'd have to argue that my houses have done that over the last 16 years. Yeah, I, I appreciate the types of houses. I, I struggle with, so there's, you, you're saying there's a market for this type of a buyer, right? Who will look for, um, previously you mentioned security was a, a big right. selling point, but now you're it talking, is. you're mostly focusing on the unattractive view. Um, because I, I mean, I'm worried that that's special privilege, but I feel that for people that travel a lot, um, they're gone six or more months out of the year. Security is an important concern. Right. And they're moving out of town because we don't have the housing stock to accommodate that. Right. I guess, so just devil's advocate. So there's eight buyers and then there's another eight behind them and another eight behind them. What, what would you propose to satisfy those buyers? Would it be to continue to create this sort of a gated community? No, the answer to that. Um, is that is that the sort of, think about that, and maybe not in this location, but in another location, in another location, think of how would you, how do you think that would fit with the character of the, of the village? So I feel that this property is very unique. There's no other eight lot situation in Hinsdale, and that's why I'm doing it. I've built I don't know how many houses in 16 years, someday I'm gonna count, mm -hmm. but um, I've never done a multi-unit situation, but this property I feel like is a special opportunity that is not available anywhere else in Hinsdale. There's no eight lot um, situation, and I feel that it's unique. I've had many, many opportunities to build outside of Hinsdale. On rare occasion I have, but 90% of my business is in the village and I live here, I work here, I'm passionate about the beauty of Hinsdale and you know, maybe you don't love this house or you don't love that house, but overall the houses that I'm building are improving the look of the And town. so someone who's lived in, in Hinsdale as long as you have, how do you feel about if there were additional gated communities that were built up? I think they're locationally specific. So I think if there's one at, you know, Washington and Third, that's a bit unusual. But this is periphery of Hinsdale proper, which I know that's not exactly the def the border definitions of Hinsdale, but you know, Ogden to 55th, 83 to 294 is sort of in town, and this is periphery in town. So it's a unique opportunity. I mean, there's a lot of people who live over there, but, um. but so the developer, I mean, the owner, the Kensington, there's no law that, that says they have to all be sold to the same developer. I mean, he could in theory sell them individually to different yes. custom home builders he, he if he wanted. To. Can. Okay, he has told me, and you'd have to ask him, but okay. that 
that's not what he wants to do. He and he also is passionate about the beauty of Hinsdale and he wants me to get this done because he feels that it's a good choice for the village mm -hmm. that I'm not going to build track houses or inexpensive houses and it's it's sort of an odd animal. I, you know, it's not public knowledge, but I don't really care. It's, I have a contract at three million, which is three seventy-five a lot, which is on the very low end for Hinsdale property. So it's a very unique opportunity to get a very high-end house with low dollars into the dirt. That opportunity never presents itself in Hinsdale property. I mean, just to put it in perspective, I mean, so some other developer comes in selling a one point five or one point seven five million dollar home. I mean, it's probably a decent, it can be a decent home, right? It might not be a $2.5 million home, but $1.75 million, it's not necessarily track housing, That's right? True. Right? But, but it's just a different type of home. But his other builders aren't at the one seven five. They're, they're low end builders. His other potential buyers. Well, have I, been I, yeah, there. I don't know the specifics. I'm, I'm just saying in general. And, yes, but you that know, buyer has it, not shown up. Okay. The, the right. only buyer that's shown up per my discussions with the seller are not definitely not in the fabric of Hinsdale. They're, they're development builders, which I'm not a development builder, but this one is like a little gem to me. And we're not in the industry. What's the term development builder? A mean? development builder builds multi-unit um, subdivision type of things. I build individual homes. Um, you know, you're talking like, like a 300 unit subdivision like in the Eperville or something. Or something. Like, right. like that's a like perfect a example and someone that's what, knocked what on the door. Like Pulte. Okay. And that, that has been someone that's engaged in conversations about this. But that developer could put up a two foot high fence or no could. fence and sell the homes and put up landscaping. And the question is, yeah. is Hinsdale better with that situation? Hinsdale situation? better. What do you mean? By, what do you mean by that? Is Hinsdale better? You know, is it is it a more attractive and more beneficial to Hinsdale? Is, to have is that? it providing homes to people who can move into the area and afford that home? Is that is that better for some people? Yeah, I guess better is a bad word. Depends okay. on perspective. All right, I guess to focus back on the variance uh, being requested. Um, does anyone have questions with the standards that uh, were being addressed? No. So, Rob, from my knowledge, um, the variance per, or sorry, the, the standard per, per code as it is today for the open wrought iron fence is at the, the, the allowable height for the, the open fence um, is at Four feet. Four foot in the front and corner side yard, correct. There, There is an exception in the code um, that doesn't necessarily apply in this case that would allow it up to five feet if it was open and either cast aluminum or wrought iron. But that, that wouldn't be applied, that wouldn't apply here. So for an open fence in a front and corner side yard, it would be four feet. And the eight foot gate as drawn here is, is permissible. It, it, it's now, well, it's six because foot, the, and it's now open by definition. Understood. Is the, gate, is the gate six feet or eight feet high? Six, six feet. Six, six feet high. The gate's six feet <coughs> high, and I'm it's now open here. by definition. Okay. Okay. You know, I've put a lot of time and money into mm -hmm. this. As you've seen, I've mm -hmm. spent a ton of money on architecture, <coughs> and I feel that this is critical to my path. So I ask you to consider my request. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. <coughs> Member Moberly. Yes. Member O'Brien. Yes. Member Murphy. Yes. Member Lee. Yes. Member Pudliska. Yes. Chairman Giltner. Yes. Anyone like to start? I'd be happy to. I think we should approve this. I think we've, uh, you know, we batted this around a lot. I think 
if we don't approve this, these are going to sit here <clears throat> for a long time. You know, the development builder is one option. I don't think you're going to find a lot that are going to of development builders interested in this. And I think you're going to wind up with a situation like James down at County Line, where a developer had it and it it's taken forever to build the houses on there. People don't want to people don't want to buy into this as buy one house when none of the others are going up. And I, I think it's going to sit there as an eyesore for a long time if we don't do something to get it. it I don't think the property markets are heating up anymore. I think if anything, it's going to be slower to find people that want to come in and build really nice houses and you know be the first one of eight and maybe sit there for five years as the only one of eight. Mm. I just I think this is a really minor concession and I'm not worried about the precedent. Next time somebody comes in with an eight lot development across Plus from you. a Thank parking you. lot, I'd be happy to give it to them. I don't, I, we're not going to that's not that's not the kind of precedent we're setting. Uh, I just don't I just don't think it's a I think it's a good idea to to I think it looks good and I think it's a good idea to let this go. We, and we're not the last decision on it anyway. I mean, if as plans get more clear, the Board of Trustees doesn't want to do it. They've got plenty of opportunity, right? The board has to do it and the, and the plan. That's correct. Be, it, right? and, and if the board's not comfortable making the decision at the board level, they've got the ability to refer it to the plan commission. Right. So that's my opinion. I think all of those are effective arguments for how we should exercise our discretion if we reach that point. The concern I have is that before we can exercise our discretion, the, all of the conditions, the requirements have to be met. And we've been struggling through several of these sessions now to try to deal with the conditions that need to be shown. It's a unique physical condition and it's not self-created for the for the impact of the parking lot across the street. That's nobody, had, you know, they, they didn't bring that problem to themselves. That's sitting there, that's the problem. And to address it then as a site issue, they have an effective argument for why it's a unique physical condition and it's not self-created. But once you shift over to the security issue, this whole problem we've had with whether this is going to be a compound, that's when we slip into the, to the area of a special privilege. And that's the thing that's got concerning me. I think we can deal with the problem of the parking lot and the visuals of that situation with what we've been talking about, border evergreens. I don't think there's been an effective argument made as to why we couldn't have a four foot wrought iron fence and the border evergreens that would be, and they can be very dense. I think we all have seen areas around the village where people have border evergreens that are very dense. They're visually, uh, they're a visual barrier and they're a physical barrier for someone who, uh, assuming they want to try to crawl over the four foot fence to try to get through the, the trees, the bushes. Um, and I think that that would provide a visual screening that would benefit the homeowners and a visual appearance for the neighborhood that is much more uh, inviting than a six foot wall, six foot brick wall. Um, I, I just can't get past the fact that that's an effective alternative here and that the petitioner, they haven't carried their burden to show that there isn't another another remedy. So I, I would be a no vote on this. Any other comments? Uh, well, I think we all have to speak, don't we? Oh, you don't have to. Okay. Um, I want you to do this thing. Um, and the gate... The gate is a major, major, major improvement. I was very happy to see to see the gate being open. And in fact, you've reduced the height and you've made it clear or open. It's this wall in the front. I just wish you you would 
you know, you can still do everything you're doing now and have a beautiful jewel box community without doing, I guess you, you can't speak. I'm sorry. I'm talking to you as a way of explanation for everybody else. I just wish, um, you, we could, I guess my rep recommendation would be to sub, like John's saying, put really dense evergreens in, in lieu of the wall that's right there along Monroe. I think you'd accomplish the same thing. You don't want to, I mean, yes, you're, it's, your, it's your choice not to, to do it or not to do it, but it's. We have closed the hearing. Not, no. not right now. If there are enough questions and if yeah. we think it would help us clarify, we, we welcome you to. Speak. I think I'm reiterating the same thing I said a month or so ago. I don't, I don't think I'm breaking any new ground. For my knowledge, if this was to get the requisite four affirmative votes to, to then send to the village board, would it then be at the board's discretion to, to approve the plans in general? They would still have final say on what or at all. They take a complete new look at it. Correct. Correct. Understood. Correct. It's just our recommendation. Yeah. Right. And they've reversed us in the past, and they have a, usually they agree, but they don't have to. That's right. that's their well to pretty independent minded folks. To clarify, to clarify, you have final authority over the the increase in the height on on the wall. Correct. Right. I mean, I, I've made my opinions known. I, I think there's a big difference between a six foot white brick wall is very imposing. It's, it's very significant footprint profile. And I just think there are other alternatives to doing that. And I understand, well, what happens when you move a eight, whatever, a six foot gate over, how do you how do you screen that? I mean, I think those are all things that can be figured out with either landscaping or just a certain type of gate that doesn't require it. I just think, I don't think, I'd love to see an example of a six foot white wall that looks like this and maybe for everyone to see it just to show how imposing that would look. Because I do think it would, it would be more significant than what's maybe represented in the drawings, not intentionally, but, and so for, for those reasons, I just think it's outside the character of the area, no matter where it ends up in the village. There's nothing like this in the village, and you could argue there's a reason for that. Um, you might see it in other communities like Oak Brook, but that's Oak Brook, or that's Burr Ridge, and I think that's okay if, if their villages encourage that or allow it, I think for, at least for now, for the last, whatever, few generations, this sort of a, this sort of a subdivision hasn't been allowed. And even if it's just a one-off and there's no precedent and there's no other uh, eight property lots like the cul-de-sacs like this, I think even just this one is going to, it's going to stick out. And I just think, and there's no guarantee that if if you do if the bill, if the developer does this that they'll even sell, but just assuming that it does, I just think something that's lower profile. I, I say wrought iron because it's black and there's a lot of it's it's not opaque. You can see right through it. I just think it's just not as imposing. I, I thought Gary's comment the other night uh, last month. I mean trick or treaters, you're closing this off. And I know that's sort of a minor thing, but it's just the idea of it is you're closing this off. Um, I just don't think it's the right thing. Even now, now we're in the summer, so pick up on that. And kids are riding bikes, kids are running everywhere. It's just, we just, this is a community of, we run from street to street and it's, we, I guess we live in, I live in the Monroe District, there's a lot of kids in the area. And so I just get a kick out of seeing people enjoying their, their lives, enjoying their bikes, enjoying their scooters. I just, and the whole subdivision wall thing, just, sorry. You know, one of the issues with the renderings is that we get a great view into the, the subject property, but we don't get to see how the view is obscured from the inside looking out to his other fourth place, which is, I think, the underlying point that you're trying to make, you know, to satisfy the criteria is that you're looking to obscure that view of that unsightly, in your, in your words, uh, on uh, less than desirable, um, enjoyable suburban view. I think that, um, I think that 
a six foot tall brick wall um, really doesn't doesn't uh, obscure as much as you would think. I don't have an issue with this. I think you've made a lot of concessions and you've brought the heights of things down. You've opened up the gate. I understand that the gate needs something to open on to, so I relate to that wall. And um, I drive down Monroe almost every day, and I really understand what a unique situation this property is in. If I lived here, this is probably what I would want to shield all the stuff that you have going on. This is There is nothing like this in our town. So, you know, in my opinion, it would be great to have somebody that has a wonderful reputation and is willing to improve it, uh, have the ability to do that rather than to see it sit for another decade plus. So. Okay. Um, any other comments? I move that we approve the variance. Second. Second. So bef can I just sure. mention one thing? So um, I was just trying to move it along. No, no. You, you no, have no. a record of doing these really. I things. know, I know, I know. Um, and I'll, an alternative, one, one approach is it's yes or no, right? And a no, a yes would then mean it moves forward. A no would mean it would not. No, you have final authority on the wall. They can choose to modify the design, come up with something that meets code, and continue to go on to the Board of Trustees right. or walk. I mean, it's entirely up to the, the contract purchaser. OK. So that, right, that, that could be a next step is if, if this gets denied, then there could be additional options, uh, code compliant on the wall specifically, and then they can then move forward like or they, they normally ask, could. Ask for a slightly different variants, right? Yeah, you yeah. could. I mean, you they could modify the, the down, request. You can approve with conditions. Feet, you whatever. can reject it outright. They can modify design, come up with a code compliant alternative, and continue to move forward. It doesn't. It doesn't die here, unless the contract purchaser chooses to walk away. Right. So if it's a no vote, is there a time consideration in which they have to reapply? Do they have to wait a certain amount of time to reapply? With a similar request, yeah, you'd have to wait two years. Even if they modify it, mm. right? If they're asking for the same It's gotta type be significantly different, and I, I wouldn't feel comfortable trying to opine on how different is sure. significantly different. Well, who sure. decides if it's significantly different? Is it us? That would probably be a conversation with a village attorney if well, that actually well, arose. And that's not gonna happen. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I do have, you know, my, if you want to know my walk away point is I can live with open on the row, but the back next to the gate, I'll walk away. If I don't get this. Okay, hold, 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 hold on, we're not, we're not recording any of this. It, just for the, for the purposes of having a recording, you know, having this documented, we need to make sure everyone's near a mic. You know, there's open meetings, you know, requirements. Okay. So, um, if if there's a majority that wants to hear the comments from Julie, um, we need to reopen the public hearing. I do, because my, my big issue is right there on the row. I'll move to reopen or withdraw my other second. motion. I'll move to I'll withdraw my second. second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Yes. Any opposed? No, just okay. voice votes fine. All right. So my last statement is, if it has to be open at the street, you know, we go along the street and then we go back and then we're solid. I can live with open at the street, but next to the gate, it's solid or I'm out. So that's four that feet, you mean, right? But that you mean the, the corner pieces the piece yeah. that's next to the actual so, gate. No, so we've got that would hide the gate. Hides the gate. Hides the gate. I, I won't do it because it's going to look awful. And yeah, yes, exactly. we have another one in Hinsdale, and they look at a park. I don't. Okay. So you're talking about these 
little L-shaped things here. I could, yeah. I can give up on those. And those would just be extensions of this. That's okay. correct. Okay. But I, I will not give up on the next and to the. When gate. you say say the L, it's the section that's along Monroe. Yes. And then at right angles to Monroe. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. But and what you what you want what you want to preserve is the wall that runs along the same line as the fence as, as the gate itself. That's correct. Okay. And that's only four feet tall. No, it's six. Is six. it six? It looks like it's shorter than. No, it's on six. Oh, it is six feet. Okay. Yeah, and that. Because the gate. It's, like, okay. I have a lot of money in this, but I have to sell this, and I'll walk away. And okay. you know what? It's an I eyesore. All right. It, it, it almost it. sounds like, I mean, I appreciate your transparency, but I don't know if we need to know your walking away threshold, I mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's fine that you mentioned it, but I, I don't necessarily know if we need to be making our decisions based on uh, a developer's, um, well, you know, threshold. You can, you can say it, but we can't rely on it. Let's put it that way. Fine. Exactly. Okay. That's between so, you and the owner. That's it's not our business. And, I mean, right. that's kind of how, that's how that's the code has to, to be. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's just unfortunate for our town. Okay. Why, why can't we rely on it? I mean, if... Because if more we, or less money is not a consideration that we can, we can consider. It's right in the requirements. Mm -hmm. More or less money. I mean, we can, we can decide that this is in the best interest of the community. Well, under the special privilege requirements, nor merely an inability to make more money from the use of the subject property. That's what I'm referring to. We, right. cannot, we cannot make a decision that on the basis of whether the property owner is going to make more or less money based upon our decision. And this is the ultimate more or less money here because it's whether the deal goes through well, or not. And, and we can make a decision that we can make a decision that we think this is in the best interest of the community and that we believe it won't happen without this variance. But that, we don't know that. No, but we can say that we, that's what we believe. We can individually we can. Yeah, I mean yeah. that can be our dis I mean it doesn't have to be a collective decision, but somebody anybody sitting here can decide right. I think this needs to happen. I believe it won't without the variance. Therefore, I'm in favor Correct. of the variance. That, Correct. There's no reason in the world we can't do that. I mean, we approved that the other day, that addition of that bedroom going past the FARs, and nobody talked about a special privilege, mm -hmm. even though it was, I want my kids all here in one area. I mean, it's just saying, we can, we can, if we think it's the right thing to do, and we're not talking about how much money somebody's gonna make, and all we're saying is we think this is the best thing for the community and we believe that it won't happen without the variance, that's, that is a perfectly legitimate decision to reach, right? I mean, is there, I can't see. I think it's an, I think it's an opinion because if you think, think about how this could play out is just hypothetically, we deny the, the variance, then it's up to the developer to decide their next step. Doesn't mean that they walk away Correct. Right? I mean, just because they, there's a statement that that's what they're going to do doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going to happen. It just, I, I think it just means that based on the standards and everything that we've heard, right, we're, 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 we need to, I think we need to focus on the variance that is being requested. And it's, it's not necessarily the end of the line for the development. If, if we say, no, it can't be six feet, it has to be, uh, it, it can't be six feet. And that's why I was trying to figure out, right, is there some alternative, either in material or um, height, that would be a further compromise well, once to you're offer talking, well, to once the you're... next, and that would actually then go, that would be information that the board, the village board would have when they took this. Once we're talking about the wall that is in the same line as, as, as the gate, then this is not self-created because they, there is an entitlement to build the gate. And it follows from the construction of the gate that you need a, a wall that's consistent with the height and the structure of the gate. That's why I think that part of the wall that's back from the street running parallel to the street there, that's an effective argument, whereas the other parts are not. Yeah. Can you speak? To, sorry, into the mic. 
to, um, I'd also like to point out with some of the other issues raised regarding the conditions, if J. Jordan removes the L-shaped part of the uh, brick fence, um, I think that removes the concerns regarding is this being used for security because it's only going to be the the brick fence along the fence of the gate line. That's it. I agree. And it will not look as much like the compound. That was really my big issue all along from last time, the last couple months is this wall along Monroe. And I think, so I'm, I'm very close to be moving over. So you, this last, I, I, I guess all the seasons, if you can get rid of this L shape and replace it with wrought iron or, you know, you don't like wrought iron, so okay. See, I, mean, I know you too well. It's, it's very sad that I know all this stuff. Um, but I could support the variance. It's, real, it's just this wall effect along Monroe that I've, I've, has troubled me from the, the first minute. And so I know the gate has to have somewhere I to go. For, so yes, for, that, for, for that wall with the gate, I think we're ready to close the, the hearing because I, it, looks, it looks like we've got a, a basis for a decision. Can I move we close the hearing? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. We can. Yeah. We can close the hearing and then have further discussion. Oh, okay. Uh, Motion to close the hearing. Second. Uh, Member Moberly. Yes. Member O'Brien. Yes. Member Murphy. Yes. Member Lee. Yes. Member Pudliska. Yes. Chairman Gilton. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, John, what you're saying is if <coughs> if the L shape wasn't a wall. Um, you you'd be as comfortable with the six foot compliant. the six foot height because that's really what we're being asked to address is the height. Right. So now, but the the L shape is now going to be code compliant, and where the variance is needed is for the wall that's running on the on the line of the line with the fence. Set back the, from with the gate. Set back. From, yeah, the the setback okay. that's parallel to Monroe. Right. Yeah. Um, and that. Since the gate is code compliant, it follows from that that there needs to be a structure on either side of the gate to allow for the gate to open and close in an effective way. And so, therefore, that part of it's not self created. I understand your reasoning, but the, the fence that's in these renderings, the L shape, that's the brick wall, and the wrought iron extended out, that's not code compliant right now. That's part of the variance, correct? Right. And well, but my understanding was that's what was just withdrawn. Right. Yes, right. Well, what is code compliant? Is it four, four feet high? Because this will, I think you still want to make it six feet high. So what, I mean, what is You're modifying the request, and if I'm understanding yeah. correctly, the only, the only the wall, the six is, foot solid the wall that will remain is that and wall on each does, side of the gate. This is going to retract the gate. So you're going to have wrought iron. A six foot wall on each side of the gate. To receive that, to receive that gate, yes, and then the balance would be uh, six foot, six foot open, and that's code compliant. Right. No, Just we open. still need a variation because you're allowed you know, four, four foot feet. open. You still need so you'd open. still need a variation on this for a six foot open fence. Yeah. What's the right. rest of the wall? Right. Right. Anyway, still, this still needs the to be. This, is, this can only be four. How tall is that? Correct. So we're six given feet. Yeah, six feet. So they need feet. the height increase for that fence along Monroe, regardless. Right. You're allowed four foot open right now by right. Well, I don't know where we are. The is do we two need, feet. Do we need to reopen this again to see whether, whether that's an issue? With the applicant or with us? I, I think applicant. I think mm -hmm. we start with what's being asked. I think, and then we discuss it, and and I think decide if we think six feet is acceptable. I think I think right now I think we can discuss it amongst ourselves until and there might be a question. Yeah, I guess the six foot wrought iron fence. Now you no longer have the screening site issue. The wrought iron fence isn't going to block the view of the parking lot. And that's the issue on which the applicant has the unique physical condition and not being self-created, the existence of the parking lot and, and the appearance of that. 
So now we'd have to decide, are we going to six feet for the wrought iron fence as a security issue? And now I think we're walking ourselves back into, at least from my perspective, back into the special privilege for the security issue. Yeah. See, ideally, I'd be looking at a code compliant wrought iron fence, <coughs> substantial border evergreens, and then the brick wall uh, adjacent to the to the gate. All right. Yeah, that that would be something that I would um, be in favor of. Is um, right is not allowing the the height increase on the walls coming out from the gate or running parallel to and, the street and then right leave it to the developer to decide if if they can come up with a solution and the fact that there's a code compliant gate leads um, to the leads to a uh, a wall that's high Leads to an Some authorization structure. of a variance for a, a wall right. that's consistent with the height of the gate. I guess one last question for you, Rob. If if the structure, the wall, on both sides of this gate, are as high as the gate, or maybe a little higher, does that require a variance? It's still a solid wall in the corner side yard, and uh, it's it's at least okay. based on. Okay. Drawings I had done on Adobe, it's still in the site distance triangle, so it still needs relief. Okay, so, so but, but if we, if, if for example, one option would be we separate it out and we say we approve the variance for that portion of the fence, but we deny it for the rest of the fence, the height increase. You can approve in part, absolutely. Yeah. And the, and the height that they're allowed if they use an open fence on the, you know, the, the, the east-west, the L-shaped, is four feet open, two feet closed. Correct. So if they wanted the six feet, which is what's listed here, it would either be a two-foot increase or a foot, four-foot increase, depending on the type of the fence. Correct. Okay. Right, okay. Okay, I understand. So, let me think here. Move to grant a partial variance for the six foot brick wall adjoining the gate. So moved. So moved. Any seconds? Second. I moved, I guess, yeah. I'll, uh, second. Second. I, yeah, I'll second. I'll second it. I think you, you can't second, can you? You're the chair. Okay. Oh, Mr. O'Brien. Second it. Yeah. Second. Okay. If this was, okay. okay. We got it? Yeah, I got okay. it. Um, okay. Any, any discussion before we go to vote? So, John, you're the most articulate among us. I've said this many times. What, what exactly are we, I, we, we kind of flipped back and forth several times. So, just from my edification, the from motion maybe everybody in TV a lands at the Granting a partial variance. For the six-foot brick wall adjacent to the on either side of the gate. So, what are we saying? Anything about what's on the row now, or is that going to be another? It'll be a separate, a separate thing. Thank you. Right. This guy's sharp. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're you're effectively denying the variance. Yeah, we're not even moving. Why, why, why don't we? Let's let's. I'd move that we do the variance for the height of the fence on Monroe, and the wall. And then see if that goes, and if that doesn't go, we we do just we vote on just the wall. Does that make sense? But the sure. I understand what you're saying. The variance that would be needed would differ whether it's a brick wall that's closed or a uh, an open wall, right? Because it's either. Right, but I would say we we would move since they already indicated they're happy to not have this be a brick wall. I would move that we have that we grant a variance for a six foot wrought iron open fence 
as on this drawing, all the way down Monroe, through the L, on both sides, mm -hmm. and then, and I don't know about that, the section that runs east and west, there's a little section, which doesn't trouble me, this, whatever that is, how many, however many feet like that is. Eight feet, maybe. Because that's a wrought, that's a, that's a fence, I believe that's a wrought iron fence that's connecting those two brick walls. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Now there is a gate here as well. The concern I have with the uh, six foot wrought iron fence is issue. that that's a pure security issue. That's not a screening issue for the parking, for the problem created by the parking lot. And as a pure security issue, we're back to the Fortress America look. Think about that, a six foot high wrought iron fence. It looks like, the, it looks like we, we already had a problem early on that this, appear, that this thing looks like the entryway to a jail. And that's kind of what that looks like. That's the kind of thing you have surrounding a, a penal facility. <clears throat> So I think uh, at this point we um, open for motions. Uh, is there a motion? Right I now, I'm oh, sorry. I, moved, I already oh, moved, oh, I thought. Wait, oh, There's a motion on the ta uh, from John, second by uh, Member O'Brien, um, to grant a partial variance for a six foot brick wall adjoining the gate. That's on the table. So we would need to vote on that before or anything. or withdraw it or withdraw it. I, um, okay. John and and uh, Gannon would have to okay. uh, uh, withdraw that. If you want to go back to the board for a different motion. Okay. If we go ahead and vote on that, we can still raise the issue about the rest of the fence, or are we done? No, you can break this into pieces. Yeah. I thought that's what you were doing, was you yeah, kind yeah. of breaking yeah, yeah. this into okay. bite-sized chunks, so, for lack of a better way to put it. So we've, we've broken it into pieces. So the first piece is what's the, is the motion that's before the board. Mm -hmm. and, and Do you want to do a roll call on that? All right. And just to be clear, we're talking about everything from that pedestrian gate and, and uh, the pillar that's there all the way to the, the pillar on that side. Correct. Uh, that's... Uh, abutting the, the gate. The, okay. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Member Moberly? Yes. Member O'Brien? Yes. Member Murphy? Right. Yes. Member Lee? Yes. Member Pudliska? Yes. Chairman Giltner? Yes. Okay. Then I would move that we also grant a variance for a six foot tall wrought iron fence, which is not as depicted in these drawings because it would run all the way around the L that's, and those other two wings that are now white brick. Uh, so, so, so the motion for a six foot fence all the way, the balance of what we've just other than what we've just approved, the rest of it uh, would uh, move that we give a variance for a six foot fence. A variance for what? Six foot fence, Thanks. sorry, wrought iron fence. Open second, open. is there a second? Second. A any discussion? I'm serious, but Sharon, Sharon just, to cl too. just to clarify, are we specifying material or are we specifying like cast aluminum or wrought iron? I'm sorry, I, as depicted on here. I, open. I, okay. open. I think it's open. Open. Okay. open. Yeah. open. Right. What's important, the, the keyword is open. Right. Open. Yeah. Okay. Open. All sorry. right. Or yep. a continuation of what's right. represented. Right. Here. Right. Open. Six foot open fence. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, had a second. Any other discussion before we vote? Well, I want you, somebody try to talk me into this thing. I. I, uh, I really think the applicant has come a really, really long way. I'm just very, I want this to go for them. I just, um, I do agree with John though that the six foot wrought iron fence may look at, make it look too institutional for lack of a better word, um, especially right there on, because it is an opening into a residential, very high end residential neighborhood. So how, does, how do other folks feel well, about the six foot wrought iron fence? Talk, I, I, talk, change my mind. Somebody four foot mind. doesn't need a variance, right? Pardon me? 
the four foot does, wouldn't need a variance. Okay. We're talking the difference All between right. a four foot and a six foot. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. All right. So we can do a four foot without a variance. They can do a four foot wrought iron fence, and I would still encourage the the border evergreens that can go as high as twelve feet mm -hmm. and be very dense. Yeah, and, and I and I acknowledge the effort and the good intentions uh, for the applicant. Um, I also feel that uh, this board is working hard to come to a compromise, and and we have approved a variance just mm -hmm. um, just before this. I, I would um, I would be in favor of uh, denying. I would I would be. Um, denying the variance for the increase for the rest of the fence. So they can keep it at four feet. It'd open be fence. code compliant at either two feet closed or four feet open. Okay. Any other discussion or comments before we vote? Uh, roll call, please. Member Moberly. Tell me again Wait. what the motion is. Oh, oh um, the motion. To approve a six foot open fence. Okay, to approve it. Okay. Six foot, six foot yes. open fence. Which is in variation of the code by two, two feet, feet of height. Yes. Correct. Okay. So is my turn. Uh, roll call. Uh, Member Moberly. We're, we're denying. So I, wait, deny. So I, that's no. a no vote. No, sorry. Okay. Uh, Member O'Brien. Yes. Member Murphy. Yes. Member Lee. Yes. Member Pudliska. No. Oops. I'm sorry. Uh, Chairman Giltner. No. Oh, that is a tie, my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, three, three. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't four. pass. It does. so, Gotta yeah. get four right. Go. So, next item on the agenda: new business. There's none. Old business. There's none. We'll revisit the Ogden case next month. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're adjourned.